previous video I showed how uh, non-primitive types, or types that start with capital letters, are past call by reference, right? So that means that the Q here, for example, Q is a user-defined type. We set it's H to 100. We pass it to the foo method, which is here. The foo method sets uh, Q, gets a copy of that Q, puts it in this Q, and then sets this Q is H to 55. But since this Q actually points to the other Q, um, then the age it prints out, as you can see down here, is 55. Uh, clear that up for the more. I mean, remember this is a local variable. I could change uh, the name to be whatever. So PPP is 55. Uh, so clearly different from this Q now. They have different names. Uh, but again, Q's age is 55. Uh, because when I pass this Q to the foo method, uh, PPP now is has a reference to Q. That means they're really both pointing to the same person. So when I change PPP age to 55, that means Q's age is changed to 55. So when I print Q's age later on, it's 55. Okay. Uh, what about strings? So the string class, you notice, has a capital S. So that means it's not a primitive type. Um, so it is called by reference. So strings are called by reference. So you might think, okay, well, the same thing's going to happen. It's called by reference. The same, same thing should happen. If I change string here, it, it is going to change uh, the string I pass, right? So if I create a new string here, and um, message equals hello there. And I pass that message over to the foo method. Then when I try to print out the original message, you know, assuming that I changed it over in the foo method, it's going to be changed. Uh, you would think that. But actually, you can't, that's not going to happen because the string class is immutable. Immutable means it does not change. You cannot change a string. You can't change strings in Java. Uh, and you're saying, what? That's crazy, right? How can you not change a string? I've been doing it all the time, right here. S dot replace. Uh, that, that's going to replace one character with another. Well, no, actually. If you look at it carefully, you, know, you read the documentation for replace. It says replace replaces each substring of this string that matches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it sounds promising, right? It's like well, it's telling me right there it's going to replace it. But you read further on down, and you realize that returns it actually returns the resulting string. So implicit in that is that the fact that the original string remains the same. So replace takes the string, makes its replacement, but then returns the new string with the changes on it already done. Uh, the original string remain, remains the same. Uh, so let me just show you. I can show that over here in here. So message dot replace uh, replace the the ll with um, Hello, with just eight, 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 eight. So that should replace message, right? So if I then print out message, that should be H8888, right? Wrong. Um, it's still hello there. It's like, what? So this catches again. This is a little confusing for beginners. Um, so what you should have done is like this new message is that. So remember, message replace, the key is that it returns, replaces, etc., and then returns the resulting string. So the string with the results is going to be returned. So that's the one we want, the new message. So if you print out the new message instead, 
And there you're going to get, hey, hello there. Um, and you can see, I'm going to print out the old message after that. So you see, the old message remains the same. So the first is a new message, hey, with it, eight, eight. And then hello there remains the same. All right. And that is true for all of strings messages. Any mess, any, I'm sorry, methods. Any method in the string class that you think is going to change the string does not. What it actually does, it, it creates a new string, makes the changes in that new string, and returns that new string for you. So what that means, and the nice thing about that, uh, is that here, if you do this, you pass a string to another method, uh, that method cannot change s. There is no way for that method to change the string s that I gave it to. So therefore, even though that this s actually points to my original string, since this method cannot change it in any way, you know, I can put replace uh, eight with uh, 55. I can put something like that, which replaces the capital H with 55, and I can pass it here. Uh, and then when I run it, uh, the message still remains hello there uh, because what I said before, right? This doesn't actually replace S. This is going to actually return a new string uh, with 55 and then ELLO. Um, and that string is just going to disappear once we return from the method. So nothing's going to happen to that. Um, so because the, the takeaway is that, uh, you know, because string is immutable, even though it is still called by reference, uh, we can think of it as call by value. So you can feel free to use strings and send them to methods and assume they're not going to change because they're not going to change. They are immutable as defined by Java.